Hey, happy Feedback Friday, everybody. It's another good day to be here with Matt Helbig. How you doing, man? What's up, Emo Geeks? Welcome back to another Feedback Friday with Matthew Smith. Well, today I've got some of my favorites. I don't know if you knew, but preparation is the way, and Judy is how that gets done. This episode is sponsored by Influence. From subject lines to pre-header text, call to action button placement, email content, header images, and more, you can test up to five versions of an email with the Influence Marketing Platform. Get a demo at the link below. Really interesting brand. Had some really fun time going through their brand. They popped up as a just a nice brand not long ago. And of course, during COVID, all this stuff got pretty interesting. I think that it's, it's an interesting brand to follow. But they have some interesting emails as well. You know, I thought I'd take us through a couple of these. They're not just talking about what happens if you're in a pandemic, but also what happens if you're in storms. How ready are you? What is the problem? Is preparation a real thing? And I think they're trying to legitimize preparation, you know, where a lot of people sort of think about preppers out there being a little bit cuckoo and they're making this think a little differently. I'm pretty interested in what they're doing And on an email level, they check off a lot of boxes for me. Simplicity and focus, number of colors. What's working for you? What are you noticing? Yeah, I think it was really interesting to see their email strategy because I think, you know, I've been targeted on their online on Instagram a bunch with a lot of their advertising. And I think they are definitely leaning into the, the branding aspect of this brand. But yeah, I think their email strategy is pretty similar to maybe their Instagram, which is getting some great product photography, getting some cool layouts. And uh, I think a lot of these emails are pretty image heavy, but I think, I guess they stand out with trying to use some different fonts and unique layouts to make their creative sort of stand out compared to some of these other brands that might not be so flashy. You know, if you're going to do all image, one of the big critiques that we've had has been that all image emails tend to be small several levels of accessibility, right? Is it responsive so that people can just read it in a different environment than your desktop? Then there's, can somebody who has temporary, you know, site impairment read it and get access to it? And then somebody who is permanent site impairment, do they have access to it? They're covering their ground, at least on the first one, where these type sizes are readable in a mobile context. I've been pretty happy with that portion What I would love to kind of look at is their copy and their strategy, I think are really, really smart. Like they play on this idea of the fear of missing out and being prepared, which is an important part of their brand. They do things like don't miss your chance to make a choice. You know, that's language that's really interesting. And somebody's done some nice work with the copy on something like that. And then they always have this consistent CTA, you know, in black and this great use of orange and and sometimes yellow. I just think that this gets the point across so well. It's just super consistent. The type sizes are really consistent. There's very little that's getting in my way here to make a purchase. And I love that. I'm just, you know, I'm really interested in in their strategy on this one, the way that they've captured this idea of like in the car, on the go, hunkering at home, you know, these different levels of kits that you can get. Whereas prepping in general can seem really overwhelming. They've done a nice job of making it seem pretty accessible just to be prepared and a lot less cuckoo feeling. So what would you change if anything? I really appreciate how short and to the point these are. I feel like you know, they don't really dive in too much about what's in the packs Too, you know, at least in this series, like they're literally just inviting you to a landing page, you know, letting you know what you need to know when it comes to these products. What I appreciate is it's this, you know, invitation to a click to go to a landing page to make a buying decision there rather than trying to totally convert you in the email. So I guess what I would change is I mean, this, these are pretty hard creatives to make fully, you know, live text and fully accessible. So that is a little tricky. And even if they spent all that time to do that, I'm not sure if the ROI would really be there for them. I think optimizing for mobile is probably the best thing they can do with these. I Maybe, maybe they could try to bring in some more personalization or dynamic content or something, depending on the different segments they have in their audience. But overall, I feel like, you know, I think they're doing a pretty great job. 
with the products that they have and how they're marketing them using email and social and different channels to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. One of the things I particularly liked was this kind of use of these notifications as a way to drive people into traffic. And Good work, Judy folks. Come check out the emails on reallygoodemails.com and see how they're doing some of this stuff. I think the driving points that you can walk away with are Judy has done a great job with simplicity and playing design golf, getting down to the simplest number of colors, the least amount of differences to focus the user on a very specific goal and job per email. So you know what you need to do in each of these emails very quickly. So well done, Judy. Thank you for uh, being a good inspiration. See you on the flip side. Peace. Happy, happy Friday, bro. Talk soon.